The Lord be with you. Welcome to our next hymn study. This is another hymn study for Easter. Uh, the other Easter hymn I gave you is for the Easter dawn service. This is for the Easter festival service. You can't learn about too many good Easter hymns. The Easter hymn that we have for the Easter festival service is number 458, Christ Jesus Lay in Death's Strong Bands. This is one of uh, Martin Luther's good hymns, and it's a hymn that he took from the old days and brought to his day and has given it to us in ours. I put here in parentheses Acts, uh, pardon me, Acts chapter 2, 1 Corinthians 15. That's where you get a lot of the, the textual foundation for the hymn. But I put here in parentheses the 12th century. And if you have your copy of Lutheran service book handy, turn ahead one page to number 459 and 460. These two hymns go together. Christ is arisen, and number 460 is Christians to the Paschal Victim. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Christians to the Paschal Victim was written in about 1060, and then in about the 12th century, Christ is arisen was written, and the two kind of mesh together. You sing a verse of 459, and then you sing a verse of 460. 459, 460, 459, 460. Two separate hymns that go great together. Uh, Luther was familiar with this. And so he took some of Christ is Arisen, and put it in Christ Jesus lay in death strong bands. So again, the wonderful idea that you and I are the recipients uh, of, of gifts that have existed for years and years and millennia. So again, we uh, at least have access to something written by a guy named Witho of Burgundy uh, from 1060, something that we, again, have access to in 2024. So uh, we'll talk about this wonderful hymn in seven verses, uh, giving us the, the great reality of our Easter celebration. Verse 1, Christ Jesus lay in death's strong bands for our offenses given. But now at God's right hand he stands and brings us life from heaven. Therefore let us joyful be and sing to God right thankfully loud songs of Alleluia. Alleluia. Past and present. Jesus only died once. Jesus only rose once, right? Our Good Friday services is not a re-crucifixion of Jesus. Easter is not a re-resurrection of Jesus. I like how we learn Christ Jesus lay in death's strong bands. That's past, but now... At God's right hand, he stands. He lives and reigns to all eternity. He lives, present tense. And where else does life come from? He brings us life from heaven. And so we say thanks. We say praise the Lord. We say alleluia. Verse 2. No son of man could conquer death. Such ruin sin had wrought us. No innocence was found on earth, and therefore death had brought us. 
into bondage from of old, and ever grew more strong and bold, and held us as its captive. Alleluia. Not humanly possible. No regular old son of man could bring us anything, could pay the price. And among you and me and among all of our neighbors, there's no one who was innocent who could pay the sacrifice required. Sin was strong, sin was bold. And we were in its clutches, we were in its hold. So again, this hymn helps us celebrate the reality of our sin, the reality of the redemption of Jesus. Verse 3, Christ Jesus, God's own Son, came down, his people to deliver. Destroying sin, he took the crown from death's pale brow forever. Stripped of power, no more it reigns. An empty form alone remains. Its sting is lost forever. Alleluia. Luther leads us through salvation's story. A uh, good way to look at verse 3 is with these images. Christmas, Christ Jesus, God's own son, came down. Right? The Cairo shorthand points us ahead to this little bit of shorthand. What do you see there? If you get my hand out of the way. The cross. Tomb. An arrow coming out of the tomb. Good Friday, Easter. Without having to write Good Friday and Easter. Christ Jesus came down. Christmas. Always looks ahead to Easter. Easter sort of has one eye looking back to Christmas when you and I receive the gift. Verse 4, it was a strange and dreadful strife when life and death contended. The victory remained with life. The reign of death was ended. Holy Scripture plainly saith that death is swallowed up by death. Its sting is lost forever. Alleluia. Death is swallowed up by death. The wonderful image that uh, this ancient story brings where Satan and death uh, are, are watching Good Friday. And uh, both of them are jubilant. Satan is just giddy. This is finally happening. It took forever. It took years. But now, Jesus is dying. And, Satan, and death is kind of happy at first. But, uh, you know, he's not feeling so well. And the nails go into Jesus' hands and in his feet. And, oh, death has these chest pains. And then they raise the cross into place and oh, oh, Satan is just overjoyed and looks at death and what's wrong with you? And death says, I feel like I'm dying. Death is swallowed up by death. That's the last victim that Jesus will conquer will be death. It's lost its sting forever. I've said this before in other videos and in Bible classes and in sermons. Death is painful. It's real. But for you and I who have received the gift of baptism, our death is sleep. Again, we fall asleep in Jesus. 
and on the last day he will raise us from our bed to life forever with him. So he who is born twice through regular birth and rebirth of holy baptism, born twice, you die once. Born once, you die twice. So death is swallowed up by the death of Jesus. It's lost its sting forever. Verse 5, here our true paschal lamb we see, whom God so freely gave us. He died on the accursed tree, so strong his love to save us. See, his blood now marks our door. Faith points to it, death passes o'er, and Satan cannot harm us. Alleluia. Pascal? Christians in America are really the only group of people who celebrate Easter. Really? Yeah. In other parts of the world, they celebrate the Paschal Feast. Or they just simply celebrate Pascha. What's that mean? It relates to the word Passover. Passover and Easter are always close together. Uh, sometimes Hanukkah and Christmas are close together. Sometimes they're far apart on the calendar. The two have nothing to do to, with each other. Pardon me. Passover and Easter have a lot more to do together. Passover is a lunar schedule calendar, uh, a lunar date. And Easter is always the first Sunday after the first full moon, after spring starts. So you're always going to find them together. The Passover. Going back to these hymns, number 460, Christians to the Paschal Victim. Here, our true Paschal Lamb we see. Jesus Christ, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. See, his blood now marks our door. Faith points to it. Death passes o'er. Faith points to what? To the blood on the door. It doesn't point to you. It doesn't point to all the good works you've amassed in your life. It doesn't point to your deficiencies and mocks you and says you should have done more, you could have done more, why didn't you do more? Faith points to the blood of the Paschal Lamb, right? Faith clings to Jesus. We celebrate Pascha. We call it Easter, that's okay. But we celebrate Jesus, the Lamb of God who died for our sins and rose for our justification. Verse 6. So let us keep the festival to which the Lord invites us. Christ is himself the joy of all, the sun that warms and lights us. Now his grace to us imparts eternal sunshine to our hearts. The night of sin is ended. Alleluia. The festival of eternal sunshine. Easter, Easter, Easter. We gather for worship on Easter, on the Lord's Day. Every Sunday is a reminder, today's the day that Jesus rose, right? Maybe you have friends who are Seventh-day Adventists. They worship on the Sabbath still, right? The Sabbath is Saturday. Jews begin their day of rest Friday night at sundown, 
And then Saturday is the Sabbath for them. Christians, to distinguish themselves, said, hey, we are distinct. Our Lord Jesus rose from the grave on Sunday, on the first day. This is the Lord's day. The feast of eternal sunshine. He brings eternal sunshine to our hearts. Even during the season of Lent, when things may be a little more somber. Again, we put away the alleluias. We do not sing the hymn of praise. It's still a little Easter. We thank God for this gift. And the, the verse ended with this. The night of sin is ended. Going back to verse 5, Satan cannot harm us. Going back to verse 4, death is swallowed up by death, sin, Satan, death, these things that terrorize us. In verses 4, 5, and 6, they are gone. They do not harm us. They're over. The victory of Jesus that he brings to us. Verse 7, Then let us feast this Easter day on Christ, the bread of heaven. The word of grace has purged away the old and evil leaven. Christ alone our souls will feed. He is our meat and drink indeed. Faith lives upon no other. Alleluia. It is a festival. If you go to a festival, you expect there to be some sort of feasting. We have the feast of all feasts in the communion meal. Faith is strengthened by the meal Christ gives. Right? In holy baptism, you are made a Christian. In the Lord's Supper, you are kept a Christian. Faith is given in the waters of baptism. That faith is nourished in the body and blood of our Savior Jesus. Faith lives upon no other. Maybe if you wonder about your faith and you think to yourself, I have not been to the sacrament in a while. Come. Feast. Why withhold yourself from what you need? We keep the festival, not only on this Easter day, but regularly, routinely. The Lord gives his meal for you. Right? As I talked about in a verse about the Paschal lamb, faith points to the blood. It doesn't point to you. Satan points to you. Satan puts your list of sins right in front of your face. And Satan accuses you. How dare you say that? How dare you do that? How dare you miss that opportunity? What kind of Christian are you? Well, I'm a Christian who trusts in Jesus. I know what I've said. I know what I've done. I know that my Savior is named Jesus Christ. I know that my Savior is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who takes away my sin. So let us feast this Easter day. Jesus is the bread from heaven. If you're thinking about manna in the Old Testament, that's fine. God gave his people manna in the wilderness. Your loving father gives you bread and wine to eat and to drink so that you may be assured that you are forgiven, so that you may be assured that you have life, life from heaven, so that you may be assured that God 
this for you. This is the hymn of the day for Easter, for the festival of Easter. Uh, we will sing it with joy and happiness and give our thanks to God. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.